the second part of the op amp circuits we would see uh, the second section let's say non linear applications in the first section we saw all linear applications where we had amplifiers inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier and difference amplifier in this second section experiment 2b we will look at the non linear applications now we would see four very specific non linear application one is first of all we need to appreciate uh, we would understand uh, the remaining circuits only if we are able to appreciate the open loop characteristic of an op amp so that we will do first and uh, we would follow it up by comparator and uh, as we know an op amp comparator is always used in the open loop so we'll see that and uh, that's the that is the second thing we'll see thirdly we'll see schmidt trigger and uh, you'll see how superior schmidt trigger is to the comparator which is open loop and uh, the another name for schmidt trigger is regenerative comparator why regenerative there is a positive feedback and you see that because of the positive feedback the schmidt trigger is extremely unstable therefore its output can never be uh, at zero whereas in a comparator you can force the comparator output to be to follow the open loop characteristic so it's possible to keep it somewhere in between which we will try to show whereas schmidt trigger you will see that because of the highly un, uh, the highly unstable uh, situation in a schmidt trigger you will see that the output can either be at positive uh, saturation or at negative saturation then what we will do is the same schmittical circuit we will modify it and by adding an r and a c we would make it an stable multiple vibrator so that way we would see uh, four kind of uh, you know different let's say non linear uh, three circuits and uh, the open loop characteristic so the open loop characteristics can be understood if we appreciate the expression between the input and the output of an op amp so the voltage of the output can be expressed as a times v plus minus v minus where v plus is the voltage at the non inverting terminal of an op amp and the v minus is the voltage at the uh, the inverting input of the op amp now this quantity a is very high typically in a 740 op amp it's at the order of 2 into 10 to the power 5 so therefore we'll see that and v out can take only maximum of plus 12 minus 12 actually we will see when we when we see the actual experiment of the cells we will see that actually uh, the on the positive side it will be maybe about maximum plus 11 and uh, on the minus side roughly around minus Uh, on the positive side about uh, plus 11 and the and the negative side about minus 11 volt so therefore we'll see that this particular quantity v plus minus v minus has to be very small typically tens of microvolts so this is uh, we must appreciate this to understand the comparator circuit especially how it works so this is just to illustrate uh, how the op amp works as a non linear circuit we'll see that So we shall look at the second application, non-linear application, which is an important application, uh, comparator. So open loop, the 741 op amp is used in the open loop mode. So what what we have done is the following. You can see that we have put a potentiometer arrangement here, such that uh, by changing this center wiper point, you can get a fairly large variation in the reference voltage. Now the op amp inputs, you see that. to the v plus input the non inverting input of the op amp we have connected the uh, input signal which is the 10 sin omega t which means peak positive peak is 10 volt negative peak is minus 10 volt and to the inverting input we have the v minus input we have applied the voltage which will change so right now you can see what we have done is the inverting terminal is given roughly 0 volts and you can see the output so on the oscilloscope you can see that uh, this is working like a zero crossing comparator so when the sine wave is above the reference you see it's uh, reaches the positive peak 
which is roughly let's say 12 volt or the the vcc and uh, the negative peak is roughly the uh, negative uh, vcc or the minus vcc which is minus 12 volts so now what i want to do is i would apply different reference voltages so what i am doing now i am increasing so now let me apply different voltages so right now i am applying about roughly 1.6 let me put a roughly 2 volts so right now the reference is about roughly 2 volts and uh, you can see that the it has it has shifted yeah so right now i am applying about 3.5 volts and you can see that on the oscilloscope as soon as that particular voltage so the one division here is 5 volts so you can see that as soon as the reference point this crossing point you can see as soon as the input sine wave is above that you get positive peak and uh, anything below that you see you get a negative peak so let me keep increasing so it's about 5.5 volts you can see that the positive peak of the output keeps reducing now this particular point which is about 5.5 volt it will cross so let me keep increasing and uh, let's see what would happen as you cross that yeah now you are applied about 7.5 volts and you can see that above that uh, so the positive peak of the output keeps reducing now it's about 8.99 volts and uh, see what would happen as i reach this is a 10 volt 10 sinusoidal as soon as i so you can see that is very small because the reference voltage is 9.8 now now you can see that uh, it has reached because we have the the reference voltage is now more therefore it has reached the negative peak now if you go in the reverse direction you will see that if now it's uh, let's say about roughly zero if you go in the negative direction the reference now is negative you can see that the changeover point has changed so anything above this reference is positive anything below that is negative so just like the previous case as i keep reducing you can see that the positive peak the positive width is very high now and uh, now it's about minus 9.8 3 volts as i keep going uh, more and more negative once i reach minus 10 so you can see uh, you can see that now it has reached positive peak okay because uh, your your signal now is is more positive compared to the reference now what we'll do is let's let's do one thing let's keep it in the middle now so the zero crossing i want to show you the xy plot or the transfer characteristics we can see so we can see this by using the display mode here and uh, choosing xy so you can see that on the oscilloscope you can see that the x versus y so you can see on the x axis you can see the signal going from minus two divisions here minus 10 all the way and right at the middle it's it changes to uh, the output changes and then you can see it reaches positive now what watch what will happen to the central line as i, I keep uh, changing the reference you can see that as i keep changing the reference now roughly it's about say five volts you can see that changeover point has shifted to the positive side similarly if i go to the negative side now you can see that the the reference is about roughly about minus 5 you can see the changeover point has uh, you know gone to the negative side so this is the transfer characteristics which is also very useful in understanding how it works so we'll see the third nonlinear circuit again a very important circuit called the schmidt trigger now schmidt trigger also has another name it is also called a regenerative comparator now compared to the, the comparator which we saw in uh, part b here you see that there is a feedback but this feedback is positive feedback because of this positive feedback this particular circuit is extremely unstable now 
slightest difference between this uh, V plus and V minus would push the output to either positive saturation or negative saturation. So what, what we have done is we have applied a 10 cyanamagate just like the earlier comparator case and we have connected two equal resistors. So assuming the output to be positive saturation to be plus 12 and the negative saturation to be minus 12, this particular plus 12, uh, this particular point connected to the, uh, the non-inverting input will be either always either at plus 6 or at minus 6. Now, uh, one very common mistake students make is they would try to apply the virtual ground property. Now, remember the virtual ground property you can apply only if you have negative feedback. And uh, here there is a positive feedback, so therefore you have to apply the basic equation which we talked about earlier that V out is equal to V plus minus V minus times the gain which is A which is uh, the order of 2 into 10 to the power 5. So that is the only equation you can use here. So let us see what will happen on the DSO. If you watch the DSO, you is uh, worth seeing it carefully. You see that here we have the signal which you applied and uh, what you have this pulse is the output. Now watch the, the triggering points. You see that the on the positive side, the output changes at uh, plus 6 as expected. But the, on the negative side, it does not uh, change at uh, plus 6, it changes at minus 6. So this is, therefore you see that this particular circuit has uh, two triggering, triggering points, whereas in the case of a comparator, we had only one uh, reference point, above and below, it gave you either positive saturation or negative saturation. Here, there are two levels. So this is the important thing to notice here. Now, let us see the transfer characteristics. Now you see here on the oscilloscope, you can see the transfer characteristics. So on the x axis, you can see the input signal going from, so this, this, this extreme end, you can see there are two divisions, it is 5 volts, uh, 5 volts, so therefore see, you can see it is plus 10 and uh, it goes all the way to minus 10 and uh, so you can see that the transfer characteristics it goes through this you, this hysteresis loop you can see and uh, important to notice here this changeover point the the positive triggering point is plus 6 which you can see that here the negative triggering point is roughly minus 6 now these two are not symmetrical uh, ideally should have been because the positive saturation and the negative saturation occurs uh, slightly different because the positive saturation would be about uh, minus, uh, positive saturation would be about uh, plus 11, whereas the negative saturation may be slightly less. So you can see that difference. Otherwise, in ideal condition, you would see plus 6 and minus 6. So this shows us how a Schmidt trigger works, uh, both the, the, in the time domain and also in the transfer characteristics. So we will come to the, the fourth uh, circuit which is an unstable multi vibrator. This is called an unstable multi vibrator because this particular circuit has no stable state or it has only quasi stable state. So it goes continuously, it goes from positive, the output will go from positive saturation to negative saturation. If you look at the circuit carefully, you will see that all that we have done is in the previous Schmidt trigger circuit we did not have this R and C and uh, instead in this uh, V minus input point we connected a 10 cyanamagate. So the difference between the previous symmetrical circuit and this is only this. We have just now put a an R of 10 kilo ohms and a 2.22 microfarad capacitor. So this has been connected. So let us see what is going to happen. So what is going to happen is this important to notice that uh, this particular circuit, this R and C will work independently of uh, this part. So this capacitor will always try to charge or discharge. Assuming the output initially, uh, let us say, set, if it, and assuming the capacitor voltage is 0 and the output is sitting at positive saturation, the capacitor will try to charge. But as soon as it uh, crosses plus 6 volt, 
the output state will change from plus 12 to minus 12 and uh, therefore the capacitive discharge. So that will keep on happening, charge discharge, charge discharge, what is going to happen. Let us look at the DSO, what kind of waveforms you get. So you can see here, this uh, capacitor voltage you can see here, the charging discharging waveform and you can see the corresponding output waveform. So this is the important thing and uh, you can see that the changeover point, it is uh, roughly, uh, let us say, exactly it should have been 6 volt, you can see slightly more than uh, plus 5 and uh, slightly uh, on the negative side, it is about minus uh, 5 plus. So this is the, it will go on forever. So this is how you would get a square wave generated using an op amp. Uh, using an op -amp. So this is what is called an stable multivibrator. The name multivibrator is given because it is giving you a square wave. Now, as per the calculations, what uh, we should get is we have we use a R value of 10k and uh, 0.22 microfarad as the capacitor. Therefore, the time period, the high and the low time period, and it's a symmetrical circuit, so the time period will be RC times ln of 3. ln of 3 is 1.098 times. 2.2 milliseconds, you would get it to be the uh, both the positive and the negative to be 2.4 uh, milliseconds roughly. Now, if you look here carefully, you can see that uh, we are getting roughly the same value. Okay, so 2.4. Uh, right now, the x-axis, the scale is one millisecond per division. You have see that one, two, and you are able to get roughly the same and both on the positive side and the negative side. So, it is roughly matching, uh, but you would see that if you expand it, you would see that there is a slight difference between the positive, for example, the positive and the negative, there is a slight difference. So, uh, here basically now you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and slightly less than 5 divisions here, whereas in the negative, on the negative side, when the, when the, during the discharge period, you would see that it is almost equal to 5 divisions. So, there is a slight difference between the positive peak and negative peak. This is because the voltage, the saturation voltages of the op amp, positive saturation and negative saturation, we assumed it to be same as the plus VCC and minus VCC, but in actual practice, as we saw, the negative side, that voltage is, will be slightly lower. It, be, it will not be minus uh, 12, it will be about minus uh, 10 of that order. So that is why you have this difference. 